Hey everyone, Graham from Loudwire here, and today it's Wikipedia Fact or Fiction time with Incubus. Thank you guys so Exciting. much. Yes. Mm. So, I went into your guys' Wikipedia pages today, pulled out some stuff that may or may not be true. That's up mm -hmm. to you to tell me. <laughs> All right. I'll Go see what happens. the glory of Wikipedia. <laughs> exactly. So, because we always do check, Brandon Charles yes. Boyd, yes. born in Van Nuys. Van Nuys, California. Porn capital of the world. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, also known as the, the Invisible Floating Torso Man, Happy Nappy, Brandon of the Jungle, and Cornelius. I have had... Quite a few monikers since those, but none of them made Wikipedia. And then Michael Aaron Einzinger. That's me. Uh, born in L.A., mm -hmm. also known as Fabio, Dynamite, and Jawa. Mm -hmm. all, yeah. all pretty much correct. There you go. I think so. <laughs> Many lives. <laughs> Many lives. Many I'm moves. sure the Many fans will ago. know those. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so Wikipedia says that you guys existed as a band for some time before you gave yourselves a name, having only chosen the band's name Incubus when required to supply a name for an upcoming show. This was, cr this was true. This is true. Yeah, yeah. We, there, was a, there was a party that, that we played in, I forget whose backyard it was, okay. and we needed a name. Mm. That was why, the, like, so the, for the first like, couple years of the existence of the band, Incubus was like a temporary name. It was a placeholder, that's right. Gotcha. We were like yeah. trying yeah. to figure out like, oh, it'll work for now. It's okay for now. So we, cause we had to like play a party. We had to like have a name. We you couldn't had to narrow anything down. Hence the, we did it. There was a thesaurus event where we did one of these. Ooh, Incubus. That, but we were also learning about Incubus, like the mythological creature Incubus in yeah. class together. And it seemed sexy and <laughs> exciting and kind of, I don't know. In our 15 year old, 15, at 15 years Juvescent old. Juvescent minds. Yes, I'm just thankful that we were getting mythology education at 15. Yes. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. So you just needed a name so at the party you could go, thank you everyone, we are. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Blank. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, perfect. It says, Brandon, you used to design concert flyers for Incubus shows. At first you had copied several drawing, drawings from a sex education book that Mike's mother gave you. Mm -hmm. Yes. But so you decided to stop using it after several prospective fans had been confused by the flyers. <laughs> that is 100% true. The <laughs> only um, addition to that fact will be that Jose and I both, Jose Pesillas, mm -hmm. uh, the second, and I would design most of the flyers together or okay. he would do one then I would do one but we uh, had a lot of fun photocopying imagery out of the joy of sex oh okay and then maybe oh, there's yeah, an the illustrated book. The book maybe there was, was the an illustrated joy of sex. Yeah, joy of, the joy of sex there's these beautiful like uh, illustration illustrations yeah mm. from the probably the late 70s early 80s I don't know your parents gave you like a sex manual no, I my, got my, nothing my, <laughs> my mom like had like somehow like left that for me in my room. I must have been about 14 or 15. Lots of chocolate. It's like, yes. like, hey guys, check this out. Oh, of course. Yeah. Dude. So yeah, we would uh, find pictures that we liked and then we would like draw on top of them <laughs> with like bubbles and things and just kind of cool, sexy, esoteric looking sex positions and then write incubus over the top yeah. of it. So just enough so no one knew what the hell it was. But they'd want to well, come check it out. But they were interested. They weren't, yeah. uh, there's a, a slight alteration to that they okay. weren't people weren't confused by it okay. what started happening was that they were disappointed when they got to the show <laughs> <laughs> no we were in high school oh, so we were yeah. passing these things out at like other high schools and people's parents started complaining Oh my God, that's mm. right. So like we, you know, we had, Why? I think it was like my number and your number <laughs> that were like our uh, house numbers were like <clears throat> on these flyers that we were handing out. <laughs> and, you know, they were very graphic drawings. But beautiful. Beautifully <laughs> graphic. So we would get these like voice messages from <laughs> like angry parents that like their children had brought these oh. flyers home. And we, we just thought it was hilarious. Mike, it says you can play the Pippa. The Pippa. And your Pippa was given to you by Steve Vai. Correct. That's correct. The Pippa. The oh, Pippa. I'm sorry. It's a Chinese lute. Gotcha. A four-string Chinese lute that, um, yeah, we used to create the song Aqueous Transmission. And, yes, it was given to me by Steve Vai. I noticed it sitting, like, in a corner in his house, mm -hmm. and I asked him about it. I said, what is that? And he told me that it was given to him as a gift um, when he was on tour in Asia at some point and um, we kind of like moved on from that to like something else in our discussion and then right before I left that day he was like hey take this and I was like well 
I can't take that from you. He was like, no, 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 take it. He was like, just promise me that you'll write something cool with it. Mm. And so I took it and brought it back to, we were living in the morning view house, recording morning view at the time. And I brought it back and kind of straight away, like pulled it out of its sheath. <laughs> and, um, we wrote aqueous transmission like right away. Remember you and I, we kind of pulled an all, all nighter that mm -hmm. night. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was a good times. All right. So you were re gifted by Steve Vai. Actually, I have a funny story That's about that because, Please. because many, many years later, um, Steve and I were emailing each other and he was telling me that aqueous, aqueous transmission, um, was like on repeat in his house. And he didn't realize that I had written that song on his instrument. He didn't yeah. know that. So when I Damn. told him, he thought that was pretty funny. It says that uh, with Make Yourself, after just two weeks in the studio with the producer, the band was unhappy with the recordings, and you opted to continue recording without any producer at all. Yes, this wow. is true. true. This is true. That sounds very challenging to kind of... <laughs> so this is probably your first foray into making a legit record with no producer, right? We... we in all honesty, like we really were self-produced and, you know, kind of always have been not mm. to downplay like the role of anybody that we've worked with. Sure. But, um, you know, we've always really had a strong sense for what we were doing anyway. And um, in I think in the case of Make Yourself, um, it was actually kind of a relief to us at, mm. at that point. Like just for whatever reason in the studio, we were kind of. We were happy with what was happening, but it, we knew that we, we, I think we felt a little bit encumbered by certain things. And when we went on our own, it was like, it felt liberating to be able to do that. Yeah. And, and also at the same time, our label, um, uh, which was Epic Records, um, they, I remember cause they were spending a lot of money for us to be in the studio and yeah. they had to make a decision whether or not they were going to like allow us to keep going okay with no sort of adult supervision <laughs> um and there was never any sort of second guessing that it, they were like they they trusted us to do what we needed to do in the studio we and we did and we had a great time and and we made a great album it says uh drive was originally named i'll be there but because there was a song by that name maybe this is fiction uh because there was a song by that name by the Jackson Five, the song's final final title ended up being "Drive." <laughs> no, that's the first time I've ever heard that's that. That's the first. I've that's heard what that it too. says on Wikipedia. Yeah, okay, that's, that's not correct. So just to just to clarify, Wikipedia anybody can update, anyone can update Wikipedia. Anyone. I'm so going on there later, and I'm going to tell some tales. It says that Megalomaniac was banned from daytime viewing on MTV because many listeners misinterpret it to be about then President George W. Bush. However, the band was actually pleased with this viewing restriction. It, it was actually um, restricted from MTV, um, and it was for what they deemed inappropriate, like political content or something like that. It, okay. it wasn't people misinterpreting it or anything like that. It was just the, the people at MTV. I think at that time, you know, it was, um, you know, post 9-11 and, you know, I think sure. probably just didn't want to play the video, to be honest. <laughs> like that was probably their way of being like. Oh, sorry, we can't. <laughs> really? Video. We've got rules. Far more popular than it would it's have been. It's a good video. I, I love that video. Yeah. Flori Sigis Mundi directed it. Um, she's such a, uh, an amazing artist, and we were really lucky to work with her a couple of times making music videos. But it was during a t it was post 9 11. It was George W. Bush, and there was, it was an interesting time w. in America <laughs> in that um, any dissent from popular political opinion was really almost dangerous mm. you know um unpatriotic it was considered considered unpatriotic to not agree with the commander-in-chief at such a sensitive time in our country but um there were huge swaths of, of americans who thought that what we were doing in response was very strange and mm. maybe there were some ulterior motives in there and so you know it turns out that it was true. <laughs> there were some deep, dark, dark ulterior motives involved. And um, yeah, but who would have thought that we'd end up where we are now? So it's strange because Megalomaniac is in a way kind of weirdly like prophetic. You know? Yeah. Because we, we, we kind of wrapped back around and came back to an even worse, more dangerous kind of megalomaniacal figure, um, figurehead. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it.
make sure you check out the Make Yourself 20th Anniversary Tour mm -hmm. starting in September, going pretty much until the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. Incubus, everyone.